I'm going to be showing you how to make Roblox UI. I'm going to be showing you how to make UI stroke, UI gradients, how to make all your UI stand out. And later I'm going to use a UI using everything that I will teach you today. So to get through the basics quickly, you need to insert screen GUIs into the starter GUI in your Explorer. Okay, and then you can insert something like a frame and that that's already an element. So size, you have the size property right here, and this is obviously the size, but as you can see, there are four values. The first two are at zero, the second are both at 100. And if we click this little arrow, you can see that, I've clicked that too, you can see that offset is at 100 for each of them, and scale is at zero. Now this is a bad thing because scale actually scales for all devices and then offset just is the amount of pixels. So this would just be 100 pixels by 100 pixels on this screen. But let's say you put it on a phone, it's going to be massive because the phone screen is much smaller. So I would generally never ever recommend using offset and always use scale. So basically whenever you insert any UI ever, you basically always want to go into size and just quickly uh, put in something like 0 0.50, 0 0.50. And this will fix your size values. And then what you can do is you can just start resizing it like normal. And it's not going to go back to offset. So this will scale for all devices. And another thing is anchor point. Uh, anchor point just determines where the anchor point is on the object, which it's at zero zero, so it's like right here. So we could change that to usually I change that to point five, point five, and what that does is it just puts the anchor point in the center of the element. So basically, that means that if I go to something like position, if so, so position basically could get affected. So if I do zero. So if I do 0 0.5, 0, 0.5, 0, then that just puts it straight in the middle because our anchor points are 0 0.5. See, if I put anchor point to 0, 0, like it was, putting position at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 just puts the top left corner in the middle. So it's basically just, it's sort of like a point of... I don't know what you'd call it. It's like a reference point, basically. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. It's it's a reference point. So basically, you'd want to. You should really often. I'd recommend putting it at point five point five because ninety nine percent of the time you need point five point five. Okay, and background transparency is just how transparent it is. Another thing, Z index that determines the sort of uh, X or the, well the Z if you if you've ever worked with Photoshop it's just layers okay, so yeah, if you yeah. have a Z index of like one and let's say yeah. I have two pieces of UI yeah. here uh, change this one to red just so you can see it let's say I have multiple UI of course if I change this one to two or so if I change this one and I keep it at 1 and I change this one to 2, it has a higher priority. So it goes above the red and it will always stay above the red. So let's say you were doing something with UI and you wanted it to be like this. You'd want the Z index of this to be behind and you'd want this to have a higher Z index. So it would be above it. And about these, I'm not sure what, exactly what you'd necessarily call them, but they're basically like UI modifiers. I suppose you can call them modifiers. But one of the most useful things about it is if you just set it to one, which is its default, your element will just have an aspect ratio of one to one, which is just a square. So let's say you wanted like a screenshot in your game that is like, so you know how TVs and stuff are at 16, nine aspect ratio, like the TV you're probably looking at right now is probably 16 by nine ratio. It's it, I mean, most likely. But basically, this can really be used to just keep 
your elements as squares because a lot of UI are squares. Like let's say you want a let's say you want a, a, a close button. All right. Well, you'd want it to be a square most likely, or actually not not most likely. A circle's probably probably a little better, but you know. Then there you have that. All right, and next we have UI size constraint. And size constraint uh, just indicates the max and the minimum size. I mean, yeah, not much to go over here. UI text size constraint. Basically, it just changes. It's like UI size constraint, but it's just for text. That's that's all it is. It's not it's not complicated. So I'm gonna assume you already know what text label is. It's just it's just a UI element of text. So we can bring this here, and we can put this size constraint in. And I think I should also introduce uh, the ability to test your UI on different uh, devices. So you can go up here, and you can click test. So you go up here, you click test, and you click device. Then what you do is you can click here. You can find a, well, the right device for you, which is probably just going to be... HD 1080, which is just a normal laptop. I know this is average laptop. I don't know why it's an average laptop. But HD 1080 is like, uh, you know, the the resolution that people play at, like full screen. So it's just the right resolution. Or if you want to try your UI on like a mobile device, probably not an iPhone 6, but something like this, then you can do it. And see what it looks like, which is obviously why you'd want scale from earlier. Because uh, here, let me show you. Let's say this. Okay, so this is. Uh, let's take this. Yeah, this is scaled by scale and not offset. See, the two offsets are at zero there at the end. So if we change that to okay. zero point five, now it will be sized by pixels. So see, it's really small on the phone, but on the computer, it's even smaller because just 20 pixels is nothing and that's just a, that's just an example of why you want to go with scale for size and basically never ever go with offset i don't see a single reason for offset maybe you'll find something useful for it but i have not found a single use for it so just always every time you put in a ui element just change this to scale or just get a plugin Alright, and colors, uh, you have just a little couple swatches here, and you could just pick your color, your hue, saturation here, and this is just brightness. And then what you can also do is you can pick screen color, and you can actually go anywhere on your screen. Like, let's say I want to get the color of this spawn. As you can see, it's literally taking the color of the spawn pad or what you'd really use this for is just to click on another UI that's the same color you want and only changing the brightness and another good one UI corner now a big issue that I was running into for months it this absolutely plagued me uh, allow me to save some of you when I did the UI radio like let's say okay, so first let me show you how it works so you just put in uh, this is kind of this is like scale the first one is offset the second is or, or the first one scale, the second one is offset. So you want to put the first value only and the last one is zero because that's your offset. You don't want offset. You only want the scale. So let's say you put that. And this goes up to a maximum of 0.5. This, so that would just be a, uh, a circle. So let's say I want to make this 0.25. Okay. Now, a, a problem that plagued me for months is that when I did uh, the corner UI the UI corner and when I clicked off of it or just went away from it for a second it just turned back into a square and the fix to that is you might have a plugin called uh, uh, you, you well I, I'm not sure what it's called here let me look through it You might have had this plugin right here, or just another rounded corners plugin from some other time, maybe. But 
plugins like this might be messing up your corners. So I wouldn't really recommend uh, plugins like that. I do have a plugin like this. It just gives you some free vectors, even, even though I already make my own vectors. This can be useful sometime. But anyways, UI gradient. Uh, a lot of you probably already know what a gradient is. So let me just show it off really, really quick. So basically a gradient is just, uh, instead of your UI being a single color, it can be a, a blend of two different colors. So let's say I wanted uh, bright red here. And then here I wanted a, a blue. So now it has a gradient of red to blue. This could be used to, if you really want something to stand out or if you're going for that style, but usually you wouldn't. But you might not believe me when I say this, but usually you don't want to use gradients. I feel like when people start, they might want to use gradients a lot just because they like how it looks, but it really does not complement other UI. It just sticks out like a sore thumb and it does not look that good. And now I'll cover all these at the same time because even I don't even use some of these. Like I don't use page layout. I don't use like, you know. So basically what these do, these layout ones, we have these four layouts. So yeah. grid layout just lets you put it. Uh, okay, let's say put this in here. So it just makes it, so it just automatically makes a grid for you. So have you have you ever seen a game where it's just like, you have your inventory and it's a search bar at the top and you have all your items in rows. This is what that basically does. So see, if I just copy, if I do control D on this frame, which is the child of this and has the UI grid layout in it and I just copy it, it will just array it for me. And what I can do is I click on this and change the properties of the cell size. And once again, you could see the offset is just selected first. You should change that, of course. And in this case, if you if if I did like 0.5, it would just be 0.5 of each one of the cells size. These are just called cells now, I guess. So 0 0.50. So well, you can't see it because it's too much. So we would probably go way lower, like 0.1. Or actually, no, no, no. I was doing cell size. That's wrong. Okay. And then we need padding to change as well. And now you can see it's all spread out. And let's say I want to increase the padding a bit. You just change that and it just increases the distance between them. And this would be the Y and that would be the X. Let's say I want these to be closer together, which you might. But you could change that to like 0 0.05. Okay, now they're closer vertically. And basically that's just what all the other that's what all the other UI layout things are. List just does it in a straight line, which is very useful for just if you want to just go up and down. This is useful if you want an an actual grid like like an inventory. A uh, table. What does this actually do? There's no, no, that's uh, okay. So really, uh, you could delve into these if you want, but I've never actually had to use these, and I've actually not used U UI padding before. Like I I'm not, I'm not a master UI designer. Like I don't know absolutely everything. Like I don't, I've never used this, and I've been perfectly fine without it. So that's probably just self-explanatory. It's probably just the padding, like what we saw earlier in the grid layout. And then we have UI scale, which is just, well, it's your scale. It just increases the scale of everything, I, I, I suppose. I think that's what it's doing, yeah. That, that's, that seems useful for that. Okay, and instead of increasing everything size, you just put one of these in. You just put one of these in, and you can just scale everything. You can just scale everything like all together. And last of all, this one should probably not be last. This is one of the most useful ones. 
is UI stroke. So I'll probably use the other frame. This frame's getting real busy. And obviously, you'd want to name all your UI just to get it sorted. Like, so see how screen GUI is right here on name. You'd you'd probably want to if you were making a simulator or something. Say like, say uh, pet simulator screen GUI or whatever you're trying to make. All right. So UI stroke. What it does is it puts an outline on your UI element and you can increase the thickness you can change the color which is what I was saying earlier with pick screen color here's a real example let's say you select the red and you don't see it because it blends in and you turn down the, the brightness see how nice that looks and you barely have to do any work that's that's a little trick that I just learned myself no one tells you that so you can pick that color there Apply stroke mode, contextual and border. That just means, let's say you have, uh, this would be way better to show in the text label. So let's say I put this in the text label instead. As you can see, because it's on contextual, it's actually putting a stroke around, well, the context of the, of the element, which would be the text. So it's putting the stroke on the text inside the actual object. But border would just border around the entire thing. And then you have transparency if you want to change that. It's always nice. Now, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything, but I'm going to try and get through a lot that most people don't get through. So let's also go through probably, oh, I know a good one, scrolling frames. Let's let's do those. Those These are very, very useful. You're probably going to need them, like guaranteed. Let's say, let's fix this size, of course. Let's put the anchor point to the middle. No, let's go. Let's go. Oscar, come on. All right, have that right here. Uh, scrolling frame, and usually, uh, not usually, if you want, on, I'd just put this in another frame. Uh, so let's just let's just make this cover the entire screen. Should that good point to the middle? All right. Just put its position no, to the no, middle. Okay. Alright, and then we can put the scrolling frame in it. On, and so scrolling frame is a lot like a frame where you can change the color and, and everything like that, background transparency. And we're going to change this just to make it stand out a little bit. So if we have this here, uh, well... Uh, it's probably pretty self-explanatory. You can see right there. So it just has the same properties as a frame, except when you go down here, you have scrolling. And canvas canvas size, canvas position, these are going to be pretty useful. And these are probably going to be, these are probably going to need to be uh, scripted. Like, this is going to need some scripting, probably. This, this needs a scripter to make this stuff really come to life. Uh, so canvas position just shows where you are on, like the canvas. Let's say, uh, so let's say I drag this. Sorry, not the whole thing. Okay. Let's say I just, I'm a player here, okay, and I just grab this, and I'm just scrolling. So if I scroll down, so you see how it's right here? It's showing the whole thing here. If I just scroll down, here, this is. I should really put an object in it. Okay. Right. So now, see it's right there. Let's say I scroll down. Okay, I go past this. And see how it's on a whole canvas? Canvas size just means how many times bigger than its current size that it is. That you can scroll. So let's say your scrolling frame is this big, right? And your canvas size is two. That means you can scroll uh, enough that you reach two of this height right here. So you could scroll. Obviously, this is just already one, and you could probably just scroll it a little bit more. Uh, scroll bar image color, it just allows you to change the actual color of your scroll bar. Scroll bar, uh, what is this? Image transfer, okay. That's just transparency. You might actually want to uh, play around with that. And scroll by thickness. This is, you're probably gonna need to use this. Just increase the 
thickness of the scroll bar. I want to make it big or whatever. Now the last thing I'm probably going to be going over is a text box. And it is not like a text label or a text button where a player like clicks it. Yeah. I'm just going to delete everything else. A text box. I'm not even going to bother doing the scale because uh, this is just for, for reference. Uh, also, uh, another tip if you're new. Always do text scale. Basically, always do it. So your, your text is the right size. Okay, anyways, so text boxes are just uh, no, sort of labels, to, or they're like text labels, but instead of just yeah. being like this, like you, the player just it? reads it, it's just for reading purposes. Instead, a text box is meant for the player to click, and it's already kind of done for you. Yeah. Instead, a text box is where you click uh, as a player, and this would be useful for something like a search bar. And what player can do when he clicks on the text box, he can just type. So let's say you want a, a sword from your inventory, and you click enter. Okay, then you can script that to work, and you can use the grid from earlier to have your inventory items laid out in an array. Okay, and a couple of the options you have here are placeholder text. So this could just be, let's say you have a search bar, right? You just... Put for, for a placeholder, you could put search dot dot dot, and let's say the player had nothing in. That's just what it would show for the player when they click. They could start, you know, typing. It's basically the grayed out text that they see before they click it. And then obviously you have. So let's say I just put something down here. So it's whatever. I just type something random. And also, I, I kind of forgot to mention, but it's pretty self-explanatory as well, is you could just change your font, which I basically always recommend. A lot of people like this font for simulators. You can make it bold, italic, all that. Uh, another thing, text X alignment. That just, that just depend, uh, you know, it, it determines where the text is aligned on the X axis. So like this way, this way, this way. So let's see, it's in the center, and I can put it on the left. And if I want to, I can put it on the right. But I'll uh, also text wrapped is just it just wraps the text so it doesn't go off the UI. So I'm just gonna put this back to the center. Scale this back on the right channel. And then here I can change that the Y to bottom, top, whatever I want. And finally, I'm gonna be showing an example of how to make a UI using what I just showed you. Now, I might recommend watching uh, rewatching the video once maybe just to recap because if you're new especially you're not going to you're probably not really going to remember all of it and you should probably go through it like one more time. So what I'm about to do now is I am about to use all the things that I just taught you and I'm going to be making a UI with it. Presumably for a simulator game, because I don't know, a lot of people just like simulators for whatever reason. So let's put in a frame, or actually, now it looks stupid. Put in screen GUI first, frame in it. Uh, and you should, if you're actually making this for something that you need, obviously name them. People, if you and if you're doing a commission, like you want these to be named, just make it organized. And you could also put folders in the. Uh, starter GUI as well. You can put your GUI uh, into a folder. Let's say like uh, this is game gameplay UI. Look, I can't so that's Look uh, UI for the gameplay. You can have like another folder. You have like another folder for yeah. like the main menu. Okay, so basically, what I'm gonna make is just a a stereotypical simulator inventory UI. So I'll walk you through it. So let's put in the screen UI frame. Change our anchor point to the middle. Put our position in the middle. Our size, fix that.
Okay, so now that we have this in, what we could also probably do, uh, just duplicate that using Control D, and then it just puts a duplicate on top. So let's just uh, let's resize that down if I can. Okay. And what I can do is I can resize the duplicate frame, put it right here in the middle, just resize it a bit. Okay. And let's say I want something like that, okay? I can just put that right there. So this will be our main frame. Yeah. This will be our title frame. And in the main frame, we could put a scrolling. Whoops. We could put a I scrolling frame. And what we could do, we could do. And this is kind of annoying. Like you should probably get like a plugin or something for this. Uh. Or if you're using multiple of the same UI element, just duplicate and just change what you need. You don't have to restart every time. And actually, before I even make that, I need to, I'm going too fast here. I need to color this. So let's make it like something like a pretty generic, but a pretty acceptable blue color. Background color here. And we don't have to dig for the same color we could just pick screen color and just click that and then we could probably just make this a little bit darker oh, look, you. and we just make that a little bit darker oh, yeah, there, and so to see the title stands out and this doesn't really unstand out but it still I gives priority to the title there. and still lets you look here of course yeah, and what we could do we could add a stroke I duplicate that, put into both, and put this probably to, let's say, I, I want this at like seven, no, okay, nine, another use for pick screen color, this is, this is amazing, I, I feel like people don't use this, so I'm not sure, just select, to make it a little bit darker, or, or even a little bit lighter, but I usually like to make it a little bit darker, okay, and for this stroke, that like what would I make that nine? Yeah, nine. Okay, and we just pick screen color again of the same stroke we just did. And then here for this main frame, we could put in a UI corner. And see, you want to obviously not overdo it because it's gonna look bad. Try not to get too too crazy with something. If you learn something new and you really like it, how, how it looks, don't go too crazy with it or else your UI is going to look plagued by it. And we just uh, duplicate that, put it into that. And see, now it adds a little bit of roundness. just makes it look a little more uh, friendly, I guess. And now in our main frame, we have a scrolling frame now. Point five, point five. And so let's go ahead and let's position this. Let's just make it one zero one zero. So basically both uh, the scales being one just makes it so it's just the same size as the parent. It's it's one to one, same size. And then what we can do is probably change the background transparency to zero. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Holding shift to keep this aspect ratio. While I'm scaling so it doesn't go like this. Holding shift. Okay, I'm gonna put this back in the middle. 
and I want to increase the scroll bar thickness a little bit. Okay, that's good. And then we we could do is we could put a UI grid layout. Okay, and we could just make a small version of this frame right here. And let's say like this is obviously your inventory, right? It just has all your pets, uh, equipment, whatever you want. And also, if, if any of you know how to fix this, I don't know why it just goes off, like kind of to the. It kind of goes off the screen. It, it's just something that's been bugging me. It's just kind of messing me up, so I can't really use these. So a uh, way you could kind of fix that is uh, by just going to horizontal alignment and just it, putting it putting it in the center. So let's say I had a bunch of these. It's just going to automatically do it for me. So you don't have to manually put each one of these. And you just have your, uh, this could just be your title or your search bar if you want. You choose. And it just has all your items or your pets right here. <laughs> and actually, yeah, I'm, to use text boxes, I'm going to make this a search bar rather than rather than a title. I'm going to put a text box. And once again, I'm not going to bother doing the scale or whatever. Just because this is just for demonstration. You always want to do the scale though. And the anchor points probably too. But I am going to change the background transparency. Text scaled. Text, I'm just going to make it say. Uh, it's a placeholder text actually. So I want to change. Make that say search. Text have nothing. Okay. Placeholder text color. We just make that like probably the same thing as its background and then just make that a bit darker. See that that looks good. That's just one of those tricks like like you gotta just I don't know, you just need experience to know that. People I feel like people don't share this one for some reason. I never see this one anywhere. It's it's so simple, it's so basic, but I just don't see it anywhere else. So the player can type right here, like, uh, let's say they they want like a, a dog, pet, or whatever. Then your yeah, a scripter would make that work. And maybe you're a scripter too. And then when they click enter, it, it just puts what you search for. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the tutorial. I hope you learned something, and I appreciate it for watching the whole thing. And goodbye.